I'm Ellie Blackburn. And I'm Bonnie Too Good. And this is Off the Leash. Leash. Proudly brought to you by the Pancake Parlour. Lovely. And back by popular demand. We're here, Off the Leash, episode number two. Episode number two, can you believe it? People actually kind of liked it. I know, the feedback we've received for this has actually been really positive. (laughs) It's been quite heartwarming, really, from our teammates. It's been quite nice. Moods. How good was Moods as one? So we're we're walking into the change room. We're just like debriefing. It just came out that day. I'm like, oh my gosh, so proud of us. Yay, we finally did it. And Moods walks in. She goes, I actually didn't cringe. And I was like, what do you mean? (laughs) She's like, I thought five minutes in, I'd have to turn it off because it'd be so cringy. I know. I can't believe she said that to and us. Like, we were like, oh, thank you, Moods. That's really great feedback. And then we walked out. You and I looked at each other and we're like, oh, my God. She listened to was, our podcast. That was amazing. And she got all the way through and didn't cringe. <laughs> I know. And then apparently she was talking yes. to Scotty in the, in the lockers and she's like, was that too harsh? Meanwhile, we were like... We were loving the feedback. We were just <laughs> that like, that was, was the positive. best thing from moods to say that. It was, it was. So, But it's been very heartwarming, everyone yeah. getting around us, which so, has been really nice. Yeah, we well, thank you for all the love and support that we've received for the first episode. But with the second episode, Prayerly brought to you by the Pancake Parlour. Lovely. Hey, and speaking of the Pancake Parlour, <laughs> Bonnie yeah. Too Good, did you know in your neck of the woods, Southland, we're opening up another restaurant there? You're kidding. No, I'm not. And Finally, one, you're coming down to the south side. I know. In the new year, we'll have a new restaurant in Southland. So that goes a bit of a call out to the people listening at home. If you'd like a job with the Pancake Parlour, please do reach out, jo- log on to the website, have a look, send us an email. Um, and yeah, how good's that? Get a job. Maybe get I can, jo- maybe you know, we should get you one. Get Oh, thank you. No, <laughs> I'll, I'll, hopefully I'll stick to the footy and the podcasting maybe. Okay, cool. Um, but thank you for the offer. No it's no really worries. great. But everyone out there, come on, get on the website and put your name up for a job at the Pancake Parlour Southland, my neck of the woods. Lovely. So thank Lovely. you. Hey, enough talk about sort of us and how good the feedback's been, but (laughs) we actually have a special guest today. We have a special guest today. We have another special guest. We've got another person who'd like to join us for our second episode. Well, we don't know if they'd like to join us. It was almost like, hey, by the way, can you show up at this time? We're doing a podcast. You're on. And then she proceeded to call me later. It's like, oh, it's at your house, isn't it? I'm like, (laughs) no, she did. She did. She She called me and was like, so what time do I have to be at yours? I'm like... At no time. You should be at mine. <laughs> Please don't We're arrive. going to Witten Oval, thanks. <laughs> Please don't show up at my house. <laughs> don't come here. <laughs> okay. All right. You so that leads us in because this person is an absolute legend. Um, our special guest today is uh, one of our teammates. Uh, she has had quite the junior football career. Uh, played for the Northern Knights. I want you to try guess who you think it is at home. She played for the Northern Knights in the NAB League, won their best and fairest in 2018 and 2019, cool. back to back. You beauty. She was an under-18 All-Australian, mm-hmm. NAB League Team of the Year in 2019, Vic Metro 2018-2019. She led the Knights to a premiership in 2019 also, so wow. a leader. Oh, wow. We like that. We love that. Footy, however, wasn't her only sport. Having a fairly successful junior basketball career, um, however, honed in on her footy and then uh, when the draft approached, uh, at the end of 2019, she was considered a bulldog and debuted uh, the opening round of that season. Um, has a cheeky Rising Star nomination in Ooh, round four. Does she In ever? her first year. And she That's also impressive. was um, the best first year player. Of course she, got she that was. award. Of course she was. In 2020. Look. She Wait, I got more. Oh, I got there's more. more. Before, there's more. But because wait, I there's want more. people at home to really try guess who this okay, person is. Okay, okay. She is an avid Taylor Swift yeah. and Harry Styles enthusiast. <laughs> so <laughs> drum roll, everyone. <laughs> we have Gabby Newton. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm so glad that you mentioned the uh, Taylor Swift and Harry Styles facts Mm. there because I feel that that's a really important and probably like the most important fact about me for people to know. So thank you. It would be a disservice if I didn't put it in there. It would be. And it wouldn't properly represent you. Genuinely. Genuinely. So thank you. Because I swear all you post on your Instagram (laughs) (laughs) is about Harry Styles. Photos of Harry Styles. And then when we're here, all we talk about is Taylor Swift. Correct. Yes. Absolutely. And why wouldn't we? That's my point. Exactly. How are you going, Gab? Yeah, great, thanks. I'm a little disappointed that I'm not 
at your house. I did think that you had a really impressive <laughs> setup going on in Brighton, but apparently not. We're at the Witten Oval, um, yeah. which is a close second, I suppose. Close second, yeah. The yeah. two good residencies are stand out. Yes. But no, this is all done at Witten Oval, Absolutely. which is beautiful. It is. Hey, before we get into some question time with Gabby and find out a bit more information as to Gabby's life, one thing that we've picked up um, last season and then we've continued it on through this season um, is having a protein shake together. Now, you two sort of do the creation of it and I'm always left to clean up. Um, know your role, play your role. Exactly, <laughs> because I have no idea how you guys put some so much art into the protein shake. So I'll leave it up to you, Bonnie, if you would like to start us off with a protein shake. Oh, um, no, that's actually Gabby. Yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry, yeah. I've even... I'm, I pour the powder in yep. and Bonnie's the shaker. And so, Bonnie's the shaker. Yes. See, I just sit there and worry about myself for five minutes <laughs> while you guys get it organized. Here you go. <laughs> here's some water. Do <laughs> here's some water Maybe as some well. Water. <laughs> oh, we do always do the water first. So yeah, you okay. Go. You can finally get some water. No, no, no. You do it. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, so, so disorganized. I know. <laughs> Maybe this should have Tell been a pre-show number. number. Mm, keep going. Okay. Good. Good. When? Good when? pouring. When? Well Beautiful. Done, Thank you for the win. All right. Th- no problem. All right, and then the shaking is a work of art. But then on a side note to this as well, like we have to have it in the glasses. Yeah, the well. mugs. Yeah, the we mugs. have the, yeah. the colourful mugs we have here, um, the Wiggles colours. Um, we all do this because we just want our muscles to be growing at all times. Yeah, big thanks uh, to Masashi for the protein. Yeah, always. Always. We're always on that grind. We just never stop us. Never yes. stop. And look at us sitting here while our muscles are growing. Absolutely. Because we're having protein. So Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's a work of art. Ooh, yeah. Very nice. Listen to that shaking. That's some ASMR right there. <laughs> Put it closer to the mic. <laughs> Sounds As Roxy watches on in the background. Yeah. Roxy, I think Roxy's going to want something to say. Yeah, I know. I know. What's your, right, right, right. Why did we get into this? How did this come about? Well, it was... Okay, oh, okay sorry, was Ellie. Um, it was actually Bonnie and I... In the first year, I think. But it wasn't like yeah. a thing. It was it just sort of just... like one of us would make it, bring it back to the other one. Then we'd ice bath and, you know, do whatever. Yeah. But then um, last year, all of a sudden, you started staying back more because <laughs> Bonnie and I always take so long in the gym and everything yeah, like that. And true. finally, Ellie finally jumped on board and yeah. took ages as well. So then it just became this tradition where we cheers our protein shakes and um, yeah. wouldn't have it any other way. I know. I just want to jump into that for half a second is the delay in us being the like or us being the last ones every time coming back Mm. from the gym I think it's also true I think what we've realized is that when everyone leaves the gym it's actually a time where we can perform Mm. and we crank up Taylor Swift Mm. we get up on the um, plyo boxes and actually have a little bit of a jam out but we we you know we want to make sure we get all our work done beforehand yeah yeah so then we can we jam out and do core Correct. And there's yes. no better way. Extra cardio and core. What Absolutely. can you ask for? Yeah. So right, here we are. This. Clink. Clinky. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Not again. <laughs> Along with tradition of this is Gabby Newton sort of laughing too much oh and... God. And spilling the protein. But it is something that we like to do, make sure after our gym mm. sessions we're um, getting the protein in, but it's become a little bit of a ritual for us. And yep. we didn't want, we want, wanted the podcast to also experience the ritual and know that we're very serious about our muscles growing. Mm. Absolutely. Yep. However, let's move on. Let's find also, out a little bit more about the Gabby Newton. Yes. So as in the intro, you had a great junior career. Um, but you also played basketball. Can you tell us, like, what's your footy journey been to this point? Yeah. Um, so I started playing footy from an Auskick age, which I think is, like, five or six. And I sort of just loved it ever since I was born, really, because my dad was, like, a footy nut. And then my brother always played. So it was just, like, you know, I wanted to be like them. Like, yeah. it was it was a Collingwood household, though. Ooh. So, I mean, we can cut that out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, I was literally just a footy nut. I just loved it. So I just played uh, juniors at Yarrambat. Oh, the Batcave. Out in the sticks, out the yes, Batcave, yeah. Yes. The Batcave um, with Lammy. Yeah, oh, well, Not with she's Lammy, a bit maybe. old for me. But, um, <laughs> yeah, Lammy. Um, yes. Yeah, I played with the boys until like under 13s and then focused on basketball for a bit. And then. So, I th- were you playing basketball and football at the same time? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, I sort of got more serious about basketball because we had like representative basketball. Um, and that started like 
at like 10 or 11 years yeah. old, whereas footy, like you don't get into rep stuff until like, what, under 15s or it maybe even older. Yeah. Um, Thereabouts. Yeah. Yeah, right. Mm. Which one did you like better at the time, like back then, at like 14, 15? Well, it's hard because I think if there had have been an AFLW to aspire to, it maybe would have been footy, but because there was nothing along that pathway, I was sort of just like, basketball's got to be my number one because footy's not really going to take me anywhere, you know? My dream was always like, I'm going to be the first woman drafted to the AFL. Oh, mm-hmm. I was just like, I'm going to play with the boys, you know? Um, mm. But yeah, I think that's sort of why basketball took over for a bit there. Um, and how serious did basketball get at some stage? What was it like for you? What was what could have been the future in basketball? Um, I was like, I was pretty set on wanting to go to college and that was like actually pretty serious. I spoke to like four or five colleges and I like, kept on in touch with them um, in my junior career. But sort of like by the time I was under 18 age, um, I think like 17, that's when I sort of drifted off the basketball path um, because footy just became like a huge thing like I made the academy and like metro and stuff like that and I was just like wow like this is legit like this could actually happen for me. That's a a big decision to make especially at such a young age and we've seen so many sort of cross-code athletes in it in the time of AFLW I mean we see it with the cricket with basketball um, and yeah it's uh, amazing to know that I guess you had that opportunity and option to kind of do that but footy became a real big love of yours so it's amazing. Just before we move on from the basketball, were you like a three-point shooter? Like, what kind of, <laughs> what part were you like a Steph Curry-esque? Oh my god, I wish I was like genuinely the opposite. Like oh. lockdown defender. Ooh. Yeah, and I, I had this thing about my shooting. Like I was like hardly shot ever. Oh. Yeah, I know, right? And Did you like, like drive it, drive down the lane? No, or no, no, no. I didn't even. Shots. I was, what was it like? No, no, no. I was just like an assist passing player slash lockdown defender. Rebounds. Yeah. Rebound! Oh my god! Rebound galore. Amazing. Oh, yeah. So yeah. more, you'd like look for like a double double in assists and rebounds. Yes, exactly. Yes, I know my basketball. <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but it's funny because I did like so many like six a.m. sessions before school, working on my shooting, and then I was just like, never oh, wow. shoot. Why yeah. engage? Would you not so shoot? Odd. Yeah, it was a it was a whole mental battle. Yeah, really? it was pretty wild. Yeah. That is bizarre. Uh, I know, it is bizarre. Because, like, when you go, um, I'm sure, like, on the defensive side of basketball and your rebound, you were really confident. But when you're out on the field, like, especially in footy, you're so confident in nearly everything that you do. Mm. Like, why not? That's I'm so bizarre not the shooting. Yeah, I know. It's, it's very odd. And I think, like, that's part of, like, the sort of culture in basketball. It's very, like, individualistic, if you get what I mean. Mm. Um, And I think that's what drew me to footy more because I felt so much more comfortable in this space. And basketball, it always felt like too much pressure on one person to not carry this team. But, you know, it's always like you talk about the Steph Currys and stuff. It's always like one player that you talk about. Whereas footy, I love that it's like you genuinely need not only all the girls on the field to be on and playing their role, but you need even the girls who aren't selected. They need to be, like, working hard at training, pushing you to be your best. And I think that's why really in the end that I chose footy because I just enjoyed that culture so much more. Oh, spoken just like a true leader then, Gabby Newton. Absolutely, I was about to say, <laughs> talk, me, talk, me, talk us through your 2019 <laughs> Premiership win with Nav League and oh, you being yeah. the captain and like if that was your pre-game speech, you saw me. I'm, I'm motivated, <laughs> I'm pumped now. Coming for your job, Ellie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I can see how your basketball has translated into sort of football for you, like because you are sort of, when we play in the midfield together, you're probably more the defensive type player not to give too much away um but you know that's just something you naturally naturally do do you feel like it's translated a lot yeah definitely and that was a lot of what I did at the nights as well I was always happy to be like sweeper or standing in the back of the stoppage or like I would drop down in defense if well not to you know to my own horn like if it was a bit of a hard game drop back into the back line and stuff like that I think it's just like where I feel comfortable and where I play my best Yeah, yeah right this show's all about tooting your own horn. Yeah. It's hosted by Ellie Blackbird. <laughs> it's true. So, no. <laughs> it's infectious. I'm getting cocky by the second. <laughs> what have I ever done? I was actually about to say we're polar opposites because I love kicking girls. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you go. <laughs> I'll take over now. Moving on. So, 20, end of 2019, you get drafted. <clears throat> you get your name read out. What did that feel like? Um, yeah, it was wild. It was like, like I look back and I'm like, that was the craziest year of my life because I was playing 
like obviously NAB league, but I had NBL one basketball. I literally had a training every single night, wow. plus like Metro Academy and then combine and draft. It was just like, wow. I don't re- I reckon like that is the le- least I've ever slept in my life that wow. year. I was just like so. It was and just like 12? all hyped up. And year twelve, yeah. yeah. It was all hyped up to this one day, <laughs> and then it was sort of like, not like disappointing but I knew before I went that I was already drafted um whereas like when I was at the combine I literally I'd only been interviewed by Bulldogs and Carlton before that so I was like oh my god all my eggs are in two baskets like I was so nervous that I wasn't going to be drafted because I was like I've only interviewed with two clubs like nobody wants me but then it turns out the reason was nobody else was going to get me but I didn't know that at the time yeah um so, yeah, just, like, hearing your name read out. Even when they told me, I was still like, oh, my God, I've just got to wait until they actually call me out because, like, who knows what could happen. Um, but, yeah, it was actually wild. Like, I can't even describe the feeling. And I think that is a common reaction with players that do find out before the actual draft night is that, like, you hear a lot of stories around players just being like, you've just got to wait till the draft night till your name's actually read out. So other people know you can talk about it, you can celebrate it, and it can actually be real. Um, but I want to go back to when you found out about sort of being selected up with the doggies and the brownies, and we believe that was a big selling point. Yes, yes, the brownies were a huge selling point. So I would try to put on a bit of a show, you know, when the gloves <laughs> came around. Yeah, of you course. You know, just put out a bit of a feast for them. And this day, um, actually, I was a bit annoyed that the doggies <laughs> had scheduled an interview because I was like, it is like two days before the draft, how do they not know who they're going to pick? <laughs> like, this is just ridiculous at this point. I cannot believe this. Come on, Mick Sandry. Get your <laughs> Come stuff on, together, mate. Get it together. And it was um, the day before my last day at school. So we oh. were doing like, I was supposed to be at my friend's house, you know, how you like, um, what is it, like with your dresses? Like yeah, you yep. yeah doing yep. all that stuff. And I was just like, oh, these people, oh, my God. The like, audacity. The, the audacity. <laughs> Oh my god! What a great word. They're literally, like the audacity. I was like, they're not even going to pick me. This is the worst. And then all of a sudden, they. Um, so yeah, sorry. I made the brownies, and um, I'm not going to give the recipe away. Mm, yeah, Don't do so. that. The Have worst it. packet mix. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> um, yeah, so I made the brownies, and they rock up at the door, and I was like, why is there a film crew? Like, this is a bit weird. And they were like, oh, yeah, don't worry about them. They're just, like, filming some of the, the draft journeys for the girls. And I was like, oh, okay, this is weird. I wish I had to put makeup on, but <laughs> okay, maybe <laughs> done my hair a bit nicer. <laughs> um, and, yeah, I think the, the brownies just got them over the line, to be honest. Who made the brownies? Was it you or...? Well, this is a point of controversy because <laughs> of course it is. a lot of the time I claim that I make the brownies, but it's actually my younger sister, Ellie, who makes them. But genuinely that day I did make them. Yeah, and I, right. I think that's what got me over the line because they were made with love and they could yes. sense that and they're like, yeah, this, yeah, this, this girl's going to go This girl is going to make us brownies in the future, so we better <laughs> draft her. <laughs> yeah, she's going to make them, not her younger sister. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Well, we have tried those brownies. They're delicious. And they are very good. They're very good. Yes. Um, very, what's the word, Norish? Norish? Is that a word? Mm, no. Not sure, but I'll be making them on Saturday, so get excited. Moorish, you would think. Yep. It would be Moorish. You're making them on, on Saturday? Saturday? Yeah. Oh, mate. So. Can't wait. Can't wait. A little wait Christmas to, treat. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Can't wait to moor on them. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a word. It is a word. Oh, my God. I just found out. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> One of the Let's listeners, you tell us. <laughs> so being drafted, come on board with the Bulldogs. What was it like throughout that preseason and then the lead up to round one for you? Um, It was like a lot of highs and lows, I would say. I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, I just needed to chill out because mm-hmm. you like you put so much pressure on yourself and us as athletes, like we're our own bit- biggest critics. And like every training, I was like, I need to do really well, like... I need to get picked and all this stuff. I'm Like, I was a number one. Like, I, I need to prove that I should have been and, like, that I deserve to be here. Um, and it was just, like, such an anxious and, like, stressful time for me. And I just wish somebody had just been like, Cal, chill out. Uh, mind you, you probably did tell me that, but <laughs> I probably just blocked it right out. I do remember having a conversation with you about that and you did raise the pressure that you felt because you were number one. Yes. Um, and we did like I remember we spoke and was like go talk to Izzy and mm. and see how she kind of dealt with it. Did you deal with it? Like what was your kind of? How did you do it? Mm. Yeah, no, I actually remember that day. I was bawling my you eyes were. out. Yeah, <laughs> and um, Izzy just like took me out and we just walked around the oval. Mind you, it was pouring rain. It was like 
the perfect like movie sequence if somebody <laughs> had been feeling all too <laughs> well. <laughs> like, <in the> <laughs> Ten minute version. Here we go. <laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah, I, I do actually remember that conversation. She she was actually really great for me that season. Um, but it was almost like I just needed to play a game and just get it over with, sort of thing. Um, but it's always been great to have Izzy because we have shared a lot of like similar experiences. So I really appreciate you and um, everybody who talked to me that day because, <laughs> oh, my God, I was a mess. But it's absolutely fair enough, that yeah. kind of pressure. And mm. it, as you said, like you haven't even played a game yet, everyone, and then everyone, the media, um, everyone jumps on board with putting that pressure on you. And then as you said, like we're our worst critics and we put – a ridiculous yeah. amount of pressure mm, on ourselves yeah especially because with aflw we have such a small window we train for what basically 12 months of the year and then we have you know such a small window to actually have fun and play yeah, yeah. um so it's like completely fair enough that you felt that way yeah and I, I think it was like because that whole year as well i'd put myself down and been like no there's no way you're going to be in like the top few picks of that draft like i was always like it'll be lucy or lucy mcavoy or it'll be george Patrikios. Mm -hmm. so then like when it did actually happen i was like oh my god like now i actually have to have like something to prove because everybody thought it was going to be those two Mm, which is such an odd thing and i wish i hadn't have thought that way but um i mean i still do a little bit now because those players have gone and done so well and i've gone and done (laughs) both shoulders but um (laughs) it's very interesting being you know, not many people, obviously, get to be the number one pick. And um, so it's really nice that, like, the coincidence to have Izzy here is just, yeah, perfect. And someone to lean on, for sure. Mm. You just mentioned it yeah. about your shoulders. Mm. So <laughs> what is what is wrong with your shoulders <laughs> for the Tell people us. at home? <laughs> yes, for those at home, um, basically just pre-season last year, um, I just injured the left one. Just It would just sublax. And then, which is just like a partial dislocation. And then it just kept happening, happening, happening. But when it would happen, like it would be so weak and unstable that it was so hard to build strength. And the thing with it is you can avoid the Rico if you can get it really strong, but I could never get it really strong because of that weakness and that instability. Um, But, you know, we were kind of like, you know what, it is what it is. I know I need surgery at the end of the season. Let's just get through this year. So we go to get through that year and um, literally the game against North Melbourne. I had just graduated from taping my right shoulder because I'd got it strong enough. What do I do? I tackle, I think it was Jess Duffin, Mm. fall on the ground and like the impact like sent it out backwards, um, subluxed again. So I was like, oh my gosh. And before that, my shoulder had only come out like through non-impact like situations Mm. and to actually have the impact, I was like, oh my God, that was really scary sort Mm. of thing. so then from there, we just knew that I needed Rico on both. Um, but then it turned out the right, the angle that the bone was on um, was off by like something like 28 degrees, which is like That's a ridiculous. Lot, right? Yeah, it's a lot. It was like one of the most he'd ever seen. Um, yeah, so good on me is what I'm saying. <laughs> Thank you, Jeans. You play Thank you, Jeans. You. I know. Um, so yeah, I ended up having to get like a bone graft from my hip on that shoulder. Wow. Um, as well as the Rico, which has just been like the worst thing ever to recover from. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then just the standard Rico for the other side. Luckily, that's been an angel to recover from. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I remember playing, I, I think it might have been like a game maybe out here or the St Kilda one and it happened mm. mid-game. Yes. <laughs> and I just looked at you and I was like, are you okay? Yeah. I actually, and yeah. you just sort of like had like a look of pain and like oh no it's happening again mm. so like how often would it happen in games and and trainings and all that like how long are we how often are we talking um it's funny that you say that because the surgeon told me to just not tell the medical staff when it would happen <laughs> so <laughs> fee i hope you're don't not do listening that at to home, this. kids <laughs> don't do that at home tell no, them no. when you're injured <laughs> um the one mm. in round one was the worst one that I'd ever yeah. had. And that was like full dramatic. I like slid to the ground. <laughs> I look back and I'm like, that was way too much. <laughs> um, but no, okay, we've all been there with yeah, dramatic injuries. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, oh, green whistle. Know it, Ellie. <laughs> um, yeah, it would happen like in the gym. It would happen. I, I reckon it was happening at least every two weeks. There was hardly a game that it didn't happen. And but it might have been like a small, but it would happen like when I was getting changed or when I was trying to wash my hair in the shower. <coughs> like it happened so often that it was just like, oh, oh well, you know, this yeah. is just how things are. I know you had to like accept it. That's how things are. But how did you prepare yourself going into games knowing that 
they could pop out because like I go into games like and if I've got a little niggle I'm like Whoa, hmm. I don't feel 100% going into this one but that was nearly every game for you last year yeah well I worked a bit with um Shenny our club psych um and I think the mindfulness before the games really helped me um because my mind would always be like oh my god it's going to happen again and I'm not going to play well like this is just horrible and I yeah I remember in round two that was like the best mindset that I went in the game with because you know I'd had the big incident the week before in round one but for some reason and I think it might have been because it was the pride game and everybody was like hyped about that that sort of took my mind off it and I was actually able to play with a bit of freedom um but to be honest for the other games it was so difficult um and I've spoken to you guys about that like I just could not get my mind right and I think that's what showed with my performance on the field you know don't be so harsh on yourself. <laughs> it's, it's obviously like a, a big thing to deal with sort of two shoulder recos and um, having to, yeah, then get a bone graft as well on top of that from your hip. Like it's like it, to have that at such a young age and, and to deal with it, like the resilience that you've shown in such a your early days with football, it's it's super impressive and something that a lot of your teammates will look at and, and be inspired by. Um, but tell us now, how's, how's the recovery going now? What are the shoulders like? Um, okay. How are you tracking along with things? Um, recovery is actually going really well. Uh, like I said, the left one, which is the most recent Rico, is just like flying along, That's smashing awesome. all the milestones. I actually started a tiny bit of contact the other oh, night, which oh. was just like, oh my God, yes. sit me up for round one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the right one's still been a bit difficult to get strong and stuff like that, but yeah. um, I've got plenty of time. So I have real confidence and the physios aren't worried at all. Um, it'll just be about building that strength, which unfortunately just takes a lot of time. Is that because it is a slightly different one and you have have that graft in there? Yeah, yeah. And um, it's it's almost like the the cup around the shoulder is like reshaped. So the body's just got to adjust mm, wow. everything accordingly, yep. which is just taking time. Yeah, right. Wow. And so now we know that unfortunately you won't be able to play in the season, which we're obviously really sad about and all that. And I know you are. I know you're really disappointed with it um, and right, rightfully so. But you've taken a, a different approach to it. To mo- Like a lot of people kind of take a step back and just sort of deal with it themselves. But you've taken a step forward and been like, put your hand up to help out and jump in with some roles this year with the team and outside of our team. So... Tell us what you're going to be doing for our team this season. Well, the details are still to be, you know, finalised. Finalised, but yep. um, hopefully I'll be working alongside Woody, um, doing some like assistant midfield coaching. Yes, I know. Oh. So watch out, Ellie. Yeah. I'll be, <laughs> be on hard your on back. Your <laughs> um, Ellie, where's your defending? <laughs> <laughs> no, Ellie doesn't need to defend. No, no. <laughs> Ball win only. Yes, and kick goals. Yep. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I think I'll be sitting in the coach's box for like a few rounds or down on the bench um, yep. and then doing some oppo analysis with Ooh. the Berg star, <laughs> nice. which I'm actually really looking forward to. But I've taken up a coaching role with the Northern Knights. Oh, back um, at the old stomping grounds for you. Back at the old stomping grounds, which has actually been like the biggest joy um, of my year. It's been amazing. Did I see on Instagram that it's an all-female coaching staff also? Yes, other That's than huge. the head coach, Lee. Um Sorry, I'm getting a bit emotional. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit emotional. Go the girlies. Um, Yeah, honestly, though, go the girlies. All female assistants. And there's um, Maddie Guerin from Carlton, who's an ex-Nider. She's down there too. Um, But yeah, I just think it's brilliant. And what brought that decision on to to join the coaching panel there? It was sort of random because um, I wasn't sure what was going on with me here, like whether... I was going to be like helping coaching or not and I sort of just wanted to work on that part of my game because I figured if I'm going to be spending this time out then I need to actually still be developing um, and I'm close friends with the talent manager there, Nat Grindle, which isn't the only reason I got the job. Thank you. <laughs> I see those judgy eyes looking at me. I had nothing on my face. Nat 100% got you the job. Yeah, she, she 1000% got me the job. Um, and she sort of just said that Maddie Guerin had reached out to be um, joining as a development coach and would I like to do the same? And I was like, oh my gosh, yes, please. And then I spent a few weeks down there and um, I was just loving it. And like I, I was able to go to every training because they're on the opposite nights to us. And she was like, if you're going to be here like all the time and we're actually loving what you're doing, why don't you join us in 
assistant coach. And I was just like, oh, my word, yes, please. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'll be the mids coach. Oh, it is. How exciting, the best That's so awesome. Like, as um, Elle said, like, people can really remove themselves from the sport kind of completely and then you've just kind of immersed yourself in a different way as, as you said to keep developing and that's just an absolute credit to your resilience and how you go about what you do it's pretty awesome that you're able to do that so very proud thank of you thank you oh my gosh you too and i want to touch back on and and move off topic a little bit here but um still in a football sense um again we're always the three that are sort of the last to sort of hang about with gym, protein shakes, and ice baths. Ice baths. Mm, ice let's baths. talk about it. Let's talk about ice baths. So mm. we always end up together. We've we've got it's almost like a big <laughs> plunge pool. Yeah. That is just freezing cold and um, tends to sort of you know we need things to distract the mind whilst yeah. you're in there. We have Debbie Lee that occasionally jumps in. Yes, and um, she mentioned that last week with yeah. all the ripper stories that she brings out. But because we're often the last ones. Yes, we need we, we need, need other content. We need other things to distract us. So we've referred to sort of ice bath stories. Ice bath stories. And the number one provider of ice bath stories is Thank generally <laughs> Gabby. Gabby. Thank you. Thank you very much. We might as well be calling them Gabby stories because <laughs> these two do not share at all. And you know what? Quite blank. Quite frankly, I'm really glad that we brought it up because it's a bone that I've had to pick with you guys for, oh. you know, two years right, now. You go, you got the floor. The floor is yours. <laughs> pick go away. On. This is why my shoulders are so sore because I've been carrying <laughs> you guys. <laughs> the ice stories. Consider yourself never coming back on this podcast. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. um, no, no, definitely. Yeah, we love ice bath stories, you know, just bringing us closer together. Um, just letting you guys find out more about me. Not necessarily yeah. the other way around. but um, And that's what it is. Is it like it is a bit of storytelling, a bit of sharing about a, sort of personal information and stuff <laughs> like that? Um, and yeah, Bonnie and I somehow tend to ask the questions and mm. don't necessarily answer them. Well, because we're only in there for eight minutes. Yeah, we end up being in there for like half an hour. We do, we Gabby do. Because Gabby lots has lots to share but and keeps going. Yeah, she so does. how do we get a word in Gab? Like we're this is us right now begging you. Just give us, give <laughs> us a minute of your time to be able to share what we <laughs> want to share. Also, mm. but it is fun. Like it's it's a great part. It's go, it's almost a great way to unwind from training. It's so full on out on the field and in gym because we all get so yep. excited when Taylor Swift comes on that it's good to mm. just jump in the ice bath and actually just debrief oh. and have a genuine conversation because we want to make sure that we do know each other. So we when it comes to playing, we can put ourselves on the line for each other, yeah, essentially. Exactly. I love how you said that. That's just beautiful, Bonnie. Mm. Couldn't agree more. Absolutely. And now I want to touch on the love of Taylor Swift and Harry Styles mm. for a moment. What brought this love on? I mean, was it their relationship that you like? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I'm drawn to, you know, this. Mum and Dad. <laughs> Mum and Dad are together, you little ripper. And then they split up and then it sort of, um, yeah. Um, did you take sides? Like, No, no, no. no. <laughs> you know, they both had valid reasons for, you know, ending it. Yeah. Um, you know, some people have said it was just a PR relationship, but I don't think so. I think there was genuine love and care. Yeah, I've seen the photos. They wrote songs about each other. They so did. Had to. Mm. Oh, my God. There's yeah. so many, you know. The lyric references, oh my gosh. Yeah. I could deep dive for hours, Elliot, and <laughs> Just I Just give will. us one lyric. <laughs> one lyric. Oh, you've well, really always the, 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 the no. red lipstick, know, white know. t-shirt. Yeah. White t-shirt being Harry. Harry, Red lipstick yeah. being T-Swizz. Yeah. yeah. Yep. No, I love them. And you know what? I actually, Harry was not my number one when I was like a One Direction obsessed mm-hmm. girl. Ooh. Liam was my number Liam. one. Liam. And I was like, I was like, I'm too cool to be like, Harry's my number one because everybody was obsessed Harry was with Harry. Everyone so I had to be Harry. different. And I was like, you know what? I love Liam. Which oh. and now I'm like, that's weird because my brother's name's Liam. Okay, <laughs> so now I don't know why I was drawn to. <laughs> I don't know why you just made yeah, it. That's so great. <laughs> I'm just thinking about it. <laughs> so weird. Oh, sure. What was your favorite? What was your favorite One Direction? Um, I was weird. I was oh. Louis. Oh no! Oh, oh my God! Louis is just a cutie. Yeah, really yeah. A I felt for him because mm, really he couldn't sing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He can sing much better than me, but a lot worse than Harry. <laughs> yeah, a lot worse than Harry. <laughs> In the nicest of ways, he mm. added value to the group. He though. did. He did. Absolutely. He did, yeah. They all bought there. You know, yeah. Just like us. Know your role. Play your role. Know your yeah, role. Exactly. Play your role. You didn't answer. Who was yours? 
Well, I actually think I was a bit of a, a Liam Zane kind oh. of oh. fan. Oh, Zane. Zane that right. horse kind of number. Yeah. yeah, as well. But then obviously <laughs> as years grown on and the band separated, definitely Harry. He's, yeah. He's yeah. beautiful, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, his music Luscious as locks. well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, gorgeous. Um, and Taylor Swift. Oh, my what gosh. What love on there with Taylor? Well, I reckon I've only become really obsessed with T-Swizz in the past, like, couple years. Because I, I guess I was, like, pretty young when her f- yeah. stuff was, like, coming out. And it's mm. only been recently that I've really, really gotten into it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I would love to just talk about her for hours. But I know Bonnie's not obsessed as we are. No. Which is actually a real point of difficulty in our friendship. Yeah. This is where I get excluded. Because yep. I loved old T Swizz, the country music T Swizz. Like, but you didn't. No, I did. No, <laughs> you didn't know me back then. Yeah, but no. like you try to claim now that you do, and you really don't. Like, if you did, you would have listened to Evermore. Like, exact. Oh my gosh, folklore. And, oh yeah. um, because Evermore, when oh. she came out with the pop stuff, I was just like. Mm, you've lost me a bit so like I drifted away mm. and was no, actually listening no. to like Carrie Underwood who's a be- like a great country music artist mm. so a true Taylor Swift fan would have stayed true and, well, and exactly. could have been to her concerts yep. and yep. I went to her concerts still oh did you yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what, what did you go to I went to 1989 oh nice um, twice. I think I actually went to Reputation too. yeah I went to Reputation yeah well, I was a bit too young. And so I to, I went, <laughs> yeah. I so I don't count. Also. I was too young to, because I, I yeah, it doesn't count. If she came now, I would be going. Do you reckon she like, Oh, she'll come. She's soon. got to. Hundred percent. She'll have to. Do coming. Taylor, if you're listening, <laughs> come on the podcast. <laughs> Taylor, come have you on the podcast. <laughs> and we know you like to invite people to private events. So, <laughs> hello. Maybe <laughs> off the leash. <laughs> if you've only got two spots available, then Ellie and I are in. Guys, <laughs> and we're excluding. also inviting you to a private okay, event so here. I can't be the plus one. Great. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Gab, <laughs> this has been a great chat. Yeah. We've touched on a lot of things. We have. Yes. Thank and you so, so thank much you for, for being me. here with us today. I'm so honoured to follow the great Debbie Lee as well. Oh, my word. Mm. Oh, my gosh. She Hello. was pretty funny last week. Oh, yeah, she was hilarious. Pretty funny. But no, thank you for sharing too and providing us with some insights as to sort of, especially the injuries that you're dealing with at the moment. I know a lot of the people, um, a lot of the Bulldog supporters are really curious as to how you're going, how you're tracking along and, um, you know, where you're at and, and what your plan is for the season. So thanks for sharing and providing some insight into that. And also touching on some other things as well, like Taylor Swift and Ice Bar stories. The more important things. The more important. The more, yeah, that's absolutely. what everyone actually really wants to hear. Yeah. Wonderful. Another great episode done. Thanks, Dave.